Hello and welcome to our channel, Successful Investing. I'm your host, Trevor Budowitz, and this is my wife, Kayla Budowitz. Today, we're going to be investing in your health. That's right. We're going to be making broth, or more specifically, bone broth. Grass-fed beef bone broth. All right, we're going to get started making our bone broth. So we've got all of our ingredients here. We're going to start with a grass-fed bone that we get uh, from our local farm. Um, so typically we will use uh, one fresh bone in ours and then uh, some reused bones. You can keep reusing the bones uh, up until they become soft and fall apart. Um, so, but I like to use one fresh bone for flavor. Uh, it just really helps with the flavor of the broth. So I vacuum sealed it. Um, typically they come in five pound packages and I will separate them out into uh, one bone each package, um, just so that I can have one fresh one for each batch. Do you know what kind of bone that is? Uh, that is a grass-fed beef knuckle bone. Ooh. So you can use soup bones, you can use knuckle bones, um, anything that uh, has uh, a lot of marrow to it. So we're just gonna add a little salt and pepper to that, again for flavor. Does a fresh bone help with how gelatinous the broth will be after? Um, I think it does help. Uh, I don't think it's necessary. I think you'd probably still be gelatinous, but uh, it definitely helps with the flavor of the broth. Mm. All right, so then uh, we've got our Instant Pot over here and we have it on the saute option. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of beef tallow or beef fat um, just to the bottom to keep it from sticking. Just about a teaspoon or so. And that's just left over from uh, our last couple batches of broth. Uh, usually you have a little fat on top that you can skim off. Then we're going to add our fresh bone um, just to get it a little browned and sauteed up. Mm. So that can sit in there for a couple minutes. That beef tallow smells good already. Oh, it does. So let's sit a couple minutes uh, and do about two minutes on each side just to get it nice and browned <clears throat> before we add in the rest of the bones. All right, so uh, we can start talking about some of our other ingredients. So after we get our bones going, uh, we will add in a little apple cider vinegar. Um, what this is really good for is pulling all the nutrients out of the bones. Um, so you only need about a fourth cup of it, uh, but we will add some of that in, and this is raw apple cider vinegar. Um, we've got an assortment of vegetables that you can use. Um, we typically add in uh, an onion, and that's quartered, uh, just one carrot, uh, a clove of garlic that I've cut in half, um, and then some celery, a little tip for storing your celery, uh, since this is the only thing that we use celery in our house for. Um, we put it in a cold water in a jar in the fridge, um, and that helps it last a long time. So we're almost at the end of our celery, um, but that's lasted about a month now uh, in the cold water. All right, so I'm gonna need my bone check, and looks like it's ready to flip. Should come off the the bottom pretty easily. Nice. And again, just trying to get it browned up. And then we'll open up some of our older bones that we have. Again, I've made a couple batches with these, uh, but they're still good. They still have um, nice firmness to them. So we're gonna add those in alongside. So typically, uh, in our Instant Pot, um, we've got one of the smaller size Instant Pots. I fill about half full, probably about five pounds of bones. Uh, but you want to use a good amount of bones. Um, that's really going to maximize the nutrients that you get out of your bone broth. So we're going to try and maximize the space we've got in there. We'll just let that finish browning real quick. Mm. 
So then the next thing we'll add uh, will be our apple cider vinegar. I've got a fourth cup of that measured out. So we'll get that added here pretty quickly. Um, and then uh, add in some water as well. Now, could, could you make this, do you have to make it, this in the Instapot? No, you don't have to make it in the Instapot. So, um, we actually typically will make uh, some big batches up in our uh, large kettle on the stove top. Um, if you do make it in on the stove top, it needs to sit for about 12 hours, versus the Instapot, we can do it in three hours. Um, and you can also use a pressure canner uh, if you don't have a pressurized Instapot, you can also use a pressure canner uh, to pick it up in as well. Hmm. All right, I think we're ready to add our apple cider vinegar. So we'll pour our fourth cup in there. And then I will add, at this point, about four cups of water. Uh, again, just to kind of get, get that to start to simmer while I add the rest of the seasonings. So we're going to add um, carrots and onion and garlic. First. Pretty straightforward. And then we'll add the celery. I just need a couple stalks of celery. Again, all this stuff is, uh, really just adds to the flavor of it. You could probably just make the, the broth with the bones itself, um, but we like to add a few other things for flavor. Okay, uh, next we'll add our seasonings. So uh, for a batch this size, uh, which is about, we use about 10 to 15 cups of water. I will do uh, one heaping tablespoon of salt. Mm. And about a half to three quarters of a tablespoon of pepper. And we just use peppercorns for this. You could certainly use ground pepper as well. Uh, and then we'll add the herbs. So with the herbs, uh, you'd like to use fresh herbs if we have them on hand, but it's the middle of February. So uh, we are right now using um, just some dried herbs. This is, uh, we're gonna add a teaspoon of rosemary. And one teaspoon of dried thyme. Let's see what we got going on. Ooh, looks good. I'll also use parsley sometimes with this, but this is just what we have on hand at the moment. And then the last thing, we add our some bay leaves. So I typically do three or four of those, depending on the size. You gotta trust your gut. That's right. The nice thing about making broth is it's a very forgiving recipe, so you can uh, add whatever you like for flavor purposes. All right, we're gonna add a little bit more water just to top it off. So I will fill it up to the fill line. Pretty close. And that should get us about to the top. All right, this is my favorite part of the broth. I think it's a culinary work of art. Uh, all the vegetables and seasonings are all ready to go. So we will just add our lid on top. Secure that down. And then we're going to switch uh, from the saute option, we're going to switch over to the pressure cook option, uh, again for three hours if you do it on the stove top. Uh, beef bones require a minimum of 12 hours in order to get that gelatinous uh, property with your broth. So that's set and ready to go, it'll pressurize, and in three hours we'll have a nice batch of bone broth. Oh, that broth smells good! 
broth has been sitting for cooking for three hours uh, and sitting for another hour so that the Instant Pot can depressurize. We have our oven mitts on and we'll open this up. Check out our brew. Ooh, looks good. Looking good. Okay, so then we're gonna lift the pot out and take it over to our strainer. So we've got a small strainer with a cheesecloth in it and a large strainer on top to make sure we get all of the little particles out of the broth. Pour. Notice all of our bananas. We got a great deal on bananas at the store mm -hmm. this afternoon. It does tend to splatter a little bit, so be prepared for a bit of a mess. Seemed to work pretty well. All right, that looks pretty good. We'll let the last little bit strain out. Uh, since we like to drink our bone broth, the best ingredient is to add a little lemon on the top. So we'll just cut a lemon in half, give it a good squeeze, and add it to the broth. Uh, for a little bit extra flavor. Probably not necessary if you are making your broth for soups and things like that, but uh, we like to drink ours, so it really enhances the flavor. All right, so we let our broth cool overnight in the fridge. And as you can see, it's got a, a fat separated up to the top. What we're gonna do is, oh, uh, break that up and see how gelatinous it is. Looks to be pretty darn good. As you can see, it uh, forms a nice jello-like substance. And then I'm just going to throw that into a pan, heat it up, and have that this morning.